Oh, hello everyone. Now before I go into today's video, I just want to quickly explain the state of the layout. I am at present of filming this video going through the process of tearing down this layout to make a way for the layout rebuild. So that's just to explain the state that the layout's in now. Although there will be some continuity issues, I guess, because there's still the last running session on this layout to be uploaded, which you shall be seeing soon. But we're not here to talk about any of that today. We're here to talk about this, a new arrival to the collection. So let's get into it. So hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel. And in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the GCR Class 9M or the Robinson LNER Class A5 as it was later classified. Now, Sonic models are newcomers to the British market. This model was only announced last year, back in 2022 and it's now just been released and this model is produced exclusively for Rails of Sheffield so you can only buy it from that retailer and this is Sonic Models first double O gauge model they have previously already released the J50 and 56XX locomotives in N gauge now I didn't rush out and pre-order one of these exactly when they were first announced but I did want one of these so literally prior to its release I pre-ordered one and it's now arrived and the version I've gone for is number 373 in the GCR green livery so without any further ado we'll get this model unboxed and down on the layout because I'm itching to just get this model on the layout and get it running and have a look at it So here we have the model out of the box and down on the layout. Right now the first thing to talk about is to discuss the quality control. Now usually at this point I'd say that there hasn't been any quality control issues but I couldn't quite say that for this model. And that's because when I first got this model and I opened it up to check that all was fine, it was clear that the cab hadn't been fixed into place properly. It hadn't even been fitted correctly as you can see in this photo. So how this got past the quality control I do not know. I have no idea. Assuming that perhaps that this left the factory looking like that perhaps could it have been caused perhaps in transit in the post? Who's to say? I've got no idea. It was an easy enough thing to fix though. I just clicked it back into place but shouldn't really have had to have done that in the first place but there we go that aside however there hasn't been any major quality control issues otherwise that was the only issue that I had with this model and that was an easy fix so for the rest of the quality all the rest of the parts were correctly fitted there isn't any damage on the model no bits that were loose in the box etc so the rest of it has turned up exactly how it should look and as you want it to all parts correctly fitted and so on it's also a very weighty loco which it needs to be because if I got this on the track and found that this loco couldn't even pull long passenger trains I'd be quite annoyed with that and disappointed and it runs beautifully out of the box too Mechan mechanism on this is very smooth 
it does need running in, like all new models do, but running is just perfect. So we'll make a start then with the detail. First of all, we have got the slim tension lock and M couplings that are a standard feature now with models. These are going to be getting replaced and replaced with magnetic couplings of course. You have a pre-fitted vacuum pipe on both ends of the loco, which that's nice to see. The buffers on this model are also sprung as well and they have been nicely painted as you can see. I don't personally have that much care for sprung buffers you're only going to be messing about with them when you're handling the model or if it's static on the layout as it is now when it's running on the layout you're not really going to be touching the sprung buffers but they're a standard feature now with all if not most models the buffer beam has been nicely painted and you've also got the locos rear number crisply applied on the front buffer beam as well on the running board we have separately fitted lamp irons moving to the smart box door and we have the pin dart just here now interestingly that is a moulded bit of detail that's not separately fitted although looking at it this part of the smart box door looks like it could be separately fitted and the rest of it's moulded but to tell that that is the case you do have to look closely at it some might argue that it should have been a separate fitting altogether for the price you know I could agree with that on one hand but to be fair the moulding isn't bad it's not like this model is brimmed with moulded detail which it's not there's plenty of separately fitted detail parts on the model and to be fair the moulding of that pin dart could be much worse and it isn't and the way it's been moulded it just does in its own right look nice and like I say you do have to look closely to tell that that is moulded so I think it's something that they could possibly get away with make of it what you will or won't but speaking of separately fitted detail parts you do have a separately fitted lamp iron on top of the smoke box you have a separately fitted handrail running on the boiler and running just above of the smoke box door separately fitted and that's been nicely painted as well in a silver colour you've got separately fitted handrails on the front of the water tanks as well nicely picked out and painted you've also got the separately fitted steam piping as well running on the boiler in the smoke box and up to the firebox of the loco you've also got these bits of detail here which I believe these are lubricator pots of some form separately fitted and they have been painted you do have some visible daylight under the boiler there's no inside motion detail underneath there but to be honest with you that doesn't really matter I don't really mind that's something I can over gloss the guard irons which are these bits of detail here have already been pre-fitted and I do like that because they can be a bit fiddly to put on yourself especially because there is then the risk of when you do glue them on you might have to end up gluing them back on again if they've become detached from going round corners and the front pony truck or bogey hits them so it is nice to see that they are with this model already fitted for you so you don't have to fit them yourself you also have the chimney and the correct style one at that as well you've got the top feed and then you have the dome top feed is part of the moulding of the boiler though personally I don't really mind that if it is moulded as for the dome and the chimney they do look to be separately fitted on the top of the water tanks you have the water filler caps they don't open up like they do on the real thing but to be honest really I don't think they need to open up on the model anyway and you also have if I just zoom in on the camera the fire iron holders because you do get fire irons in the detail pack supplied with this model on top of the firebox you'll have the safety valves and on top of the cab roof you have the whistle 
Now, looking at them, they do look like that they've been made out of turned brass. Because they don't look like that they're plastic parts that are just painted. So I think that these have actually been made out of turned brass, which is lovely to see. All of the cab windows, front and back, are fitted with glazing. Just on the cab sides, you have the handrails for the door. And they're separately fitted and again they're painted. You've also got the cab doors as well, they've already been pre-fitted as well. They don't open up or anything, they're just there, but I don't really mind that. Because even if they could open, how often would you be having the doors opening? So they are there, in some cases I have seen with some RTR models you have to fit the cab doors yourself. Which can be a fiddle to do, shall we say. <laughs> So they can be quite fiddly, but they've already been fitted for you. The interior detail on the back head of the model is all painted. Now the cab roof can be removed. To do it, you have to remove the cab roof carefully, and then remove the coal load out of the bunker, and I believe there's a screw in there that you can screw out. But I don't really fancy doing any of that, just to get to the cab interior detail. So I'm going to give it the best shot I can, that you can see. And I'm having to use the torch on my phone so that you can see it because without that you can't see any of this detail. But it's all there, it's all picked out and painted, the regulator, handbrake, dials, gauges etc. It's all been painted and it just looks really realistic looking. Looking at the dials, they don't seem to have any detail on them, they just look to be just painted. So it would have been nice if they had actually put it printed detail on those to make them look even more realistic. But aside from that though, the rest of the detail that's there has been painted and it's done really lovely. The inside of the cab interior has also been picked out in a very nice cream colour as well. Moving to the bunker, as you can see we have the coal rails and the coal load in it. As I said before, the coal load is removable. I usually do tend to show this on models. But I'm not going to do it with this one. I don't know yet if I am going to fit a real coal load into this model. I might do in the future. But I think to be honest I can just leave it as it is. Because even if it is just a plastic coal load. In my opinion I don't think the detail on the plastic coal load. Looks half bad. I think it actually does look quite convincing. To be a coal load. Moving to the rear of the bunker, we have separately fitted lamp irons, as you can see, a separately fitted handrail, the loco's room number, 373, crisply applied and very neatly applied, I should add, in the centre of the bunker, pre-fitted vacuum pipe, sprung buffers like they were on the front of the loco, and, true to the prototype, the buffers on the front of the loco, where the chimney and smoke boxes are oval. On the bunker, they are round. And also, it's quite a unique feature with this loco as well is the footsteps. As you can see, they've been positioned on the rear of the loco under the buffer beam. Which I haven't seen that before in any steam engine. Not to have them fitted to the rear buffer beam where the bunker is. You've also got the sand gear as well. That's separately fitted detail as well. We now move on to the livery application. Now the reason I chose the Great Central Line Green livery is because I have the Class D11 from Backman, Mons, in this livery as well. So naturally it had to be the Great Central livery of this loco that I had to get to go with my D11. And I have to say I think the livery application is stunning. Although on both sides of the water tanks there does seem to be two small white paint chips, or marks at least, on the water tanks. So it might look a bit perhaps off-putting for some when it's stationary, but to be honest, when this loco is running on the layout you're not going to really notice those anyway. And to be fair in real life, nothing is dead perfect anyway. With some of these locomotives they might look immaculate and pristine, but I'm sure if you got up close to them you might find imperfections.
brush marks or whatever. But then to be honest with you, sending the model back just because of two small white paint chips that you can only really see when you get really up close to the model isn't really worth returning this I don't think. If it had a very nasty mark on the model that you could see it, even when the model was running, then I would send it back. But over two small paint chips where you can hardly really see it anyway, and I'm not even sure if even if right now you can see it on camera. I can with my eyes, but looking at the camera screen, I can't see them unless I got up close to them. Then it's pointless sending the model back over that. But the paint job is still been done very evenly and neatly. There isn't any major imperfections anywhere. As far as I can tell, I think the shade of green is spot on. Not to mention all the lining has been crisply and neatly applied. Not just on the wheels, but also on the boiler bands, on the water tanks, on the bunker, and on the cab sides. And I think the lining really does set this livery off superbly. I think it's an absolute gorgeous livery this. You've also got the great central font there and the logo on the water tanks. As far as I can tell, it's the correct font. And the printing on that has been crisply and neatly done. The colour and the lining on the lettering just looks fantastic. And you have the Locos Re number, very crisply and neatly applied on the sides of the bunker. Switching the Loco around to the other side, there are a couple of detail differences. I will cover these anyway because I usually try to. You have steam piping on this side, running just above the handrail. Though that steam piping is different to what you saw on the other side. And I will have to move the camera for this. But as you can see, you have the reversing lever there. And that's separately fitted and painted. I'll quickly go through the details that you get in the accessory bag. You have the brake rigging, the fire irons, there is a NEM pocket in there, as well as some lamps. So some of these detail parts I shall be fitting to the model. Something I find interesting with this locomotive, not necessarily in model form but with the prototype, is that being a tank engine, this has a 462 wheel arrangement, which is a Pacific wheel arrangement. And there were a few tank engines that were given a 462 wheel, wheel arrangement, namely this one, the A5. There was also the Prince of Wales tank class, which was a successor to the 460 Prince of Wales class. There was also the, NE, the NER class Y, developed from the NER class X, later the T1. There was also the J1 class, which later got altered to have the J2. There was also the Caledonian Railway 944 class. And then there was the H16. So it's nice to see a tank engine with a 462 wheel arrangement in ready to run on the market which is something that we've not had until now not in ready to run form anyway so now that we've covered the model in detail what we're now going to do is do a running session not just with the A5 but with the D11 as well so with the great central locos that I own we're going to do a running session with both of them this will be the only time that you'll see both locomotives running together on this layout because as I've already explained and pointed out this layout is being re rebuilt which is currently in the phase of being ripped up so you will see these two locomotives on the new layout running together at some point I can't say when because I won't exactly be rushing out to do running sessions once I've got the layout rebuilt but anyway let's get into the running session so seeing both these two locomotives running together is going to be quite something.
so as an added bonus for this video, I'm doing a double header with the A5 and the D11. Just to finish off the running session part of the video. I can't deny that those two together, they make a wonderful sight. Right, so we've covered the Sonic models A5 in detail. We've seen it running around the layout, all in the teaks, in a running session, alongside the Batman D11. We've also seen a few shots of the A5 double heading with the D11. So, with nothing else really to say now, that now brings me on to my final verdict for the Sonic models Robinson A5 or GCI 9N as it was first classified. So what are my thoughts then on this model? This is Sonic Models first double O gauge model. Have they produced a great model and is it worth buying? Personally I think this is a fantastic model. I personally don't mind the moulded smart box door pin dart there on the smart box door. That's something I can let go. Because to be fair there's very little moulded detail elsewhere on this model. There's that many separately fitted detail parts on it. Aside from that quality control issue where the cap hadn't been fixed on properly, that's something I still managed to sort out. But it is still otherwise a very well made product. Runs great. There's enough weight in it for me to be able to stick behind my full rack of coaching stock behind it without any issues. I did however have a couple of issues with derailments with the front bogey and rear pony truck. That was only on one section of track and to be quite honest I can blame the layout for that because that particular section of track is not exactly as even and flat as I'd like it to be or as it should be. And as I've already mentioned a few times already, I've already done this to death, this layout is being ripped up and rebuilt. So that's another thing for the new layout. Not just to make it better scenery and detail wise, but also operationally and reliability. I want these baseboards on the new one to be nice and flat. And even. And to be fair, it was only a few times. It was only on that one section of track. It didn't happen anywhere else. And we eventually got those shots. Had it been derailing constantly, it would have been a very different matter altogether. But it's like with anything really. Point a camera at it. <laughs> It doesn't seem to want to work when it comes to filming. So as well as being a fantastic model, it does have great detail. Like I say, it runs well and also there's the value of money. I think that this is quite reasonably and well priced for today's market, the current market as it is now. So if you guys want one of these, I would personally recommend one. I'd either say go ahead and buy or at least consider it. If you are into your steam locos and the Great Central is your cup of tea, then it's a must. Whereas if you're like me, you like to collect your models and you're into your steam, it's definitely something worth buying, I think. I for one I'm glad I spent the money on this model. So I'll be interested now to see what else Sonic models might have in the pipeline. I'm sure perhaps they'll produce some more double O gauge models. What could we see next? I wouldn't mind seeing Sonic models tackle some of the other 462 Pacific tank locomotives. Would certainly be great to see. So that now brings me on to the end of my video. Thank you all so much for watching this review on 
the Sonic models Robinson A5 462 tank locomotive. I hope you've all enjoyed the video. If you like what you see as always please do subscribe to the channel, smash the like button and feel free to post a comment and check out all my other videos I've got on the channel. But until then, this is a goodbye. Take care and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra.